Hi Denzel, Terrence, NK, we did the refi on the home from a 30 year, 3.12%, uh, been in the home four years, five months, to a 15 year, 2.85%, gain 300 cash flow by removing escrow, and 139 removing the PMI. Nice. Their intention is to pay off debt, okay? There might be other advice out there where they say that's stupid. You shouldn't have refi, you should have refied up and you have a lower payment, get the cash flow, leverage that and go invest. That's another strategy as well. It depends on what are you trying to accomplish. Do you want to be a debt leverager? You want a debt leverage and you want a 10x? If you have the mental capacity to handle and manage debt effectively in up markets, down markets and stagnant markets, Go right ahead, go talk to my friend Grant Cardone, Uncle G, 10X, go check that out. If you're in the middle between a Dave Ramsey and a Grant Cardone, this is kind of like where I dwell for right now at my current state of mind. You know, even though I like to 10X, I'm still not leveraging debt to a major extent. I leverage debt with my credit cards with my cash value policy, with my business credit cards, that's kind of where I've been floating. But I haven't leveraged a lot of debt to accumulate real estate. Not yet, but I will. I'm accumulating right now. I'm going through the 10X Grant Cardone Processo, right? So I have a strategy and I'm learning and I'm educating, getting myself up to that point. Usually I have a problem with people that come to me with making four grand a month. They're like, I, you know, I want to leverage. I'm like, dude, like you've got $200 a month in cash flow. What, what do you mean leverage? Can we get some kingdom principles going first? Are you giving 10%? Are you helping people? Are you saving? Are you saving effectively? Are you managing what you currently have? Did you build your business credit and your personal credit? Like, did we get the fundamentals down first before we start jumping and going all crazy? Right, that, that's kind of like how I'm in the middle, right? I'm past Dave Ramsey thinking, but I'm not past Grant Cardone thinking, right? So I'm in the middle there. That's kind of where I dwell. I like being cash liquid. I don't like having my cash locked up in 401ks and IRAs. I don't like having my money locked up till I'm 59 and a half. I like to have access to my cash, liquidity from my assets. This is why I'm going to be moving, you know, into the real estate space eventually, you know, this year, my goal, buy multifamily piece of property. And we'll see where we go from there. My car lease ends next month. I decided to purchase the car. Should I pay cash? Totally up to you, Maritza. If you have the capital, the ability to pay cash and that's what you want to do then do you right I can't argue with that right me I I paid off my car with my cash right I just paid the damn thing off didn't mind if you're looking to maybe I don't know do something else with your money like invest or start a business and you don't want to suck up your cash into the car, depending on how much it is. I don't know if it's a really expensive car or maybe it's a used, whatever it is. I think you need to evaluate your four major numbers and see what kind of position are you in. Are you getting ready to start a business? Are you getting ready to partner with somebody? Are you getting ready to invest in crypto or do something like what is the focus? What What's What's the mission? What's the vision for your life? How do we move forward, right? Just wondering which is better to pay off larger chunks over more months or smaller chunks over shorter periods. That's a more clarifying question. Thank you. Typically, it depends on your four major numbers. What, what I call that smaller chunks, I call it micro chunking. 
If I'm dealing with somebody that has 16 credit cards, I might do little micro chunks to knock off each one. Just depends. Um, and then I typically I stick with the bigger chunks, but there may be periods where it makes sense to just do a little micro chunk here, especially if you're trying to invest in a property or something like that. So that's typically the case. Glenn, many banks like Bank of America are not offering HELOCs. Any recommendations on HELOC company currently offered live in California? Okay, somebody give value. I know I have a client in here that lives in California that has a home equity line of credit. Mr. Glenn, you have to look at the local credit unions in your area. Don't look at Bank of America. Don't look at Chase. Don't look at Wells Fargo. Don't look at the major banks. I always start off with local credit unions, then I go state credit union, then I go federal. I see, uh, I don't know if that's a military fit, but if you uh, look up US Bank, Penn Fed, um, Navy Fed is not doing HELOCs at the moment, but usually military friendly credit unions are very good in terms of getting a home equity line of credit. I inquired with a bank that was discouraging me from doing HELOC, instead they said, Suggested a close-ended cash out refi. What do you think is the reason? The reason is profit, profits. It's more profitable for them to do a cash out refi than a home equity line of credit. Home equity line of credit is typically like no cost, no closing costs. A cash out refi has closing costs and they put you in more debt, more debt and it's amortized, closed, not revolving. 